from 850,000 missing bitcoins to Harvey's casino robbery. These are the biggest, craziest heists ever. Number 10. The theft of the Mona Lisa. Before Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa was considered the most famous piece of artwork, the Louvre did not hide it behind bulletproof glass. In fact, it only took one guy in a lab coat to steal this painting in 1911. Vincenzo Perugia was a former worker at the Louvre who snuck inside the museum, waited for the room where the painting hung to empty out, took the painting off the four iron pegs, wrapped it in his lab coat, and left the building the same way he came in through a side door. He hid the painting for two years inside a trunk in France and later moved it inside a different trunk in his new apartment in Italy. He grew impatient and eventually tried to sell the painting to an art gallery. Weird, I know. He was busted immediately and the painting was returned to the Louvre safely. If you're thinking about doing a quick theft of the Mona Lisa again, know that it is worth about $780 million, so security has definitely beefed up. Just a little bit. Number 9. America's Data The Equifax Breach Short and to the point, in today's online world, data is sometimes more valuable than cash. Sure, the amount of personal data that Facebook, air quotes, lost is horrible and leaves a pretty bad taste in your mouth. But it's nothing compared to the amount of personal, highly sensitive data Equifax gave away. Around 145.5 million Americans, up to 44 million British, and 8,000 Canadian residents were affected by the breach. And let's be honest, you signed up for the Facebook one. From the simple stuff like previous addresses to the unthinkable social security numbers, everything was hacked. Nothing has happened with the company yet, and after a sharp decline in their stock value, it seems to be normalizing again. What do you think? Should any one company hold this much personal data? And what is the alternative? Number 8. MT Gox If you have lost a bunch of money on the crypto market in the past 3 months, you shouldn't feel too bad. A 70% correction is awful, but it's not as bad as losing 100% of your holdings. That's exactly what happened to most users of the now infamous online exchange, MT Gox. Side note, I always feel like I want to call it Mount Gox but it actually stands for Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. What does Magic the Gathering have to do with Bitcoin? Nothing. The owner of the website decided to capitalize on the emerging cryptocurrency market back in 2010. By 2014, the exchange was handling more than 70% of all Bitcoin transactions in the world. That was in January. In February, the exchange suspended trading, and by April, the company began liquidation proceedings. Even though most traders knew they were screwed, MT Gox announced that about 850,000 bitcoins were missing. In 2014, that was about $450 million. At the height of the market in 2017, the bitcoins would have been valued at a cool $17 billion. Around 200,000 coins have been recovered from different wallets, but the rest are likely to never see the light of day again, so to speak. The exchange was run so poorly that someone siphoned all those coins in a three-year span, beginning in 2011. As the saying goes, sorry for your loss, it's just money, bro. Number 7. The Central Bank of Iraq Robbery in early March 2003, days before the US shock and awe attack on Iraq, Saddam Hussein decided to do some bank withdrawals. March 18th, 4 a.m., three large box trucks pulled up to the Central Bank of Iraq and spent five hours loading up hundreds of boxes filled with cash, around US $1 billion to be exact. It was Saddam's insurance money. He was trying to make sure that he and his son would have enough cash for the rest of eternity, and everything was going great, until the eventual collapse of the country and the death of both Saddam and his son. The money was seized by US forces when they found aluminum boxes containing $4 million in cash each. During the counting process, hundreds of thousands of dollars disappeared or made their way to the USA. Some 35 US service members were convicted of theft, a major was caught with $440,000 and a captain with $700,000. It is believed that these guys were the dumb ones that got caught, and in reality, the people who stole millions were a bit more elusive. Number 6. 
the world's biggest art thief. Not to be confused with Budweiser, Breitweiser is one of the most notorious figures in the art world. Between 1995 and 2001, Stefan Breitweiser stole 239 pieces of art with a worth estimated around $1.4 billion. He took the artworks from 172 museums all over Europe. How was he able to achieve this? By traveling Europe and working as a waiter. Plus, his girlfriend was an accomplice and often kept a lookout while Stefan did the dirty work. One of the more notable thefts happened at Sotheby's auction house, where he stole a $7 million painting that was supposed to go on sale later that day. He never sold any of the artworks. Instead, he kept them hidden inside his mother's house in France. Stefan was eventually arrested in 2001, and while the police were investigating, his mother decided to destroy many paintings and threw a lot of artifacts in the Rhine River. Yep, that's right. The person who stole art because he loved it so much was responsible for its destruction in what can be considered the biggest if I can't have it, no one can moment in the art world. Mr. Stefan received a brutal, long, three-year sentence, which he only served 80% of. His mother also received a three-year sentence, but only served 18 months. Number 5. The Lufthansa Heist December 11, 1978, $5.87 million worth of cash and jewelry goes missing from the JFK International Airport in New York City. The robbery was dubbed the Lufthansa Heist and at the time was the largest cash robbery committed on U.S. soil. Everything began when a fella named Henry Hill learned of a way to steal millions of untraceable cash and shared his plan with the criminal Jimmy Burke, who was an associate of the Lucezic crime family. Lufthansa flew in American currency that was exchanged in West Germany every month. They would keep the cash in a vault at the Kennedy Airport and then disperse it to banks. Jimmy Burke organized the heist with a little bit of help from airport workers, and on December 11th, armed masked men stole almost $6 million in the span of 61 minutes. And they would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Seriously though, the guy who was supposed to dispose of the van used in the theft decided to go party at his girlfriend's house instead. He also parked the van in a no parking zone. The cops wasted no time tying the van to the robbery and the house of cards started falling down. Jimmy Burke became paranoid and started killing off everyone who was involved in the heist. None of the money was recovered, and we got one of the best crime movies ever. Goodfellas. Investigators are still trying to tie up all the loose ends, but with each passing day, the job gets harder since the people they are investigating are either dead or in their late 60s. Number 4. The Gardner Museum Heist during the continued festivities of St. Patrick's Day in 1990, the Isabella Gardner Museum was visited by two police officers who were responding to a disturbance call. One of the two guards on duty that night decided to let them in. Surprisingly, the officers claimed that the security guard looked familiar and arrested him on the spot. Then the other security guard showed up. Instead of saving his buddy, he was also quickly arrested. After some pleading with the officers, the two guards finally realized what was happening. After one of the police officers told them that this was no arrest, but in fact, a robbery. So the fake officers of the law spent 81 minutes stealing various paintings, including two Rembrandts, and most notably, the concert by the Dutch painter Johannes Vermeer. This painting is valued at over $200 million, and it is the most expensive stolen painting ever. In total, the thieves took 13 pieces, or $500 million worth of art, and disappeared into the night. And that's it. They were never caught. But the FBI is still actively pursuing leads, and their latest house raid was in May 2016. The Gardner Museum still has the empty frames on display, awaiting the return of the paintings. They also have a $5 million reward for the safe return of the art. Number 3. The Antwerp Diamond Heist the Antwerp Diamond Center in Belgium was the scene of the biggest diamond heist east and west of the Mississippi. Leonardo Nota Bartolo rented an office in the same building where he posed as an Italian diamond merchant to gain credibility and a 24-hour access to the center. He stuck with the ruse for two and a half years until it was time for the ultimate heist. His crew gained access to the main vault through sheer ingenuity. 
the vault that was protected by seismic sensors, Doppler radars, a lock with 100 million possible combinations, infrared heat detectors, and even a magnetic field. In other words, it was supposed to be impenetrable. The thieves broke into 123 out of the 160 safe deposit boxes and made away with more than $100 million worth of diamonds, jewelry, and gold. They also stole the surveillance footage, and it seemed like they had thought of everything. Well, almost. Just like any genius thief, Leonardo made just one crucial mistake. When he was getting rid of the security tapes, he also threw away a half-eaten sandwich. And through DNA testing, he was implicated in the robbery. He never gave up anyone else from the crew and received a 10-year sentence. None of the stolen property was ever recovered, and since this is such an awesome story, J.J. Abrams is expected to produce the movie about it. Number 2. Securitas Depot Robbery the Securitas Depot robbery is considered the largest cash robbery in British history. On February 21st, 2006, the manager of the depot was abducted along with his wife and daughter. He was then driven to the depot at 1 a.m. The masked gunman bound and gagged the 14 employees that were working and proceeded to take around $60 million in cash. Securitas offered a $3 million reward for anyone that had any information about the theft or the perps. Luckily for them, the cops did their job, investigating this case, and after about one year of raids and arrests, they had recovered $13 million in cash, and arrested 36 people in connection with the robbery. The main thieves got sentences ranging from 10 to 25 years. Number 1. Harvey's Resort Hotel Heist Stern warning to the management and bomb squad. Do not move or tilt this bomb because the mechanism controlling the detonators in it will set it off at a movement of less than 0.01 of the open end Richter scale. Don't try to flood or gas the bomb. There is a float switch and an atmospheric pressure switch set at 2633. Both are attached to detonators. Do not try to take it apart. The flathead screws are also attached to triggers, and as much as one-fourth to three-fourths of a third will cause an explosion. In other words, this bomb is so sensitive that the slightest movement either inside or outside will cause it to explode. This is the ominous note that Bob Vinson, a graveyard shift supervisor at Harvey's Wagon Wheel Casino in Lake Tahoe, found in the early hours of August 27, 1980. The note was attached to this hunking piece of metal, which was filled to the brim with TNT and had 23 ominous switches. So that was letter number one. The second letter consisted of the mystery man's demands. We demand $3 million in used $100 bills. They must be unmarked, unbugged, and chemically untreated. If we find anything wrong with the money, we will stop all instructions for moving the bomb. At some point, right in between reading these two letters, everyone involved realized that this is not a joke. At all. Nearby businesses were also evacuated by the National Guard and the FBI quickly set up camp across the street. The demands of the robbers only increased in difficulty. The plan was extremely thought out and included every detail. A chopper was to gather the money, fly to a deserted airfield, cut off all contact with law enforcement, and await more instructions. The final instructions that the pilot found were From the time you received the telephone call, you have three minutes to get airborne. Follow Highway 50 to the west, on the right hand side in a straight line. Don't go over 500 feet above the elevation of the terrain, approximately 15 miles west of the airport. Start looking for a strobe light on your right. A radar gun will be aimed at a 45 degree angle in your direction, and will turn on the strobe automatically when it catches you in its range. Again, no communication with anyone or by any means. You have four minutes to land after the strobe turns on, because after four minutes, all lights will go off automatically. On the other side of these instructions was a man by the name of John Burgess Sr., a Hungarian immigrant who at one point was a millionaire due to his business success. Unfortunately, he had a pretty big gambling problem and spent most of his fortune at Harvey's Resort and Casino. He wanted his money back, one way or another, and he even made his two children and his girlfriend part of the plan. Anyway, back to the story. The helicopter pilot misunderstood the directions and flew the wrong way until his fuel was depleted. He then proceeded to go back to the airfield, hoping for more instructions. But the instructions never came, as John Burgess Sr. was busy driving back to his hometown of Fresno. 
The FBI decided the best thing to do was to try and defuse the bomb by blowing up the upper half, which they believed housed the failsafes and the detonator. It was a solid plan, but it did not work. Either by mistake or malice, the explosives in the machine were not TNT, but dynamite. Dynamite is much harder to control, and it explodes way easier than TNT. The damage to the building was substantial, but repairable. It took about $18 million to restore the building to its former glory. The would-be robbers retreated and tried to get rid of evidence that connected them with the explosion, but they did not do the greatest job. As it turns out, one of the sons shared the whole plan with an ex-girlfriend of his, who in turn told her new boyfriend, who in turn went to the feds and told him everything he knew. After a lengthy and thorough investigation, both sons turned on their father and spilled every single bean. They received immunity for their cooperation. John Burgess Sr. was sentenced to 20 years in prison and he died of liver cancer before he could get out. The FBI still has a replica of the machine on display and they even use it in training exercises. Many agents claim that even modern day bomb squad units would not be able to do anything to disarm it safely. Jimmy Burgess Sr. wanted to pull off a slick heist and get away with $3 million. His plan failed, he died in prison, and the casino that he hated so much got an $18 million facelift. There's a lesson to be learned somewhere in there. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.